Welcome to the Cobra Sports Weekly Update. It's been another great week in Rattler and Cobra Sports. Football marooned the Pirates. Arr! Volleyball played tough against St. Rake team. Cross country spent some time on the beach. And the Golden Cobra Band excelled in their first competition. All that and more tonight's weekly update. But before we get into any sports, let's talk about that gold, Golden Cobra Band. Uh, we had the opportunity to see their show this past Friday night, and it was spectacular. The following day on Saturday, the Golden Cobra Band competed at the U.S. Band's Crossroads Showcase in Victoria. The band finished fifth behind a few 4A schools and one 6A band program. Uh, they scored second in marching, fifth in music, fourth in guard, and sixth in percussion. Golden Cobra Band had the highest score of all the 3A bands in attendance with a 76.2 out of 100. Uh, the band will perform this Saturday during the Jackson County Livestock Show Parade, and then they're going to be marching in competition at 145 in Edna Will. Uh, final competition before UIL uh, begins. That UIL competition will start on October 14th in El Campo, so go band. Absolutely, and we got to see them this past Friday night perform their their show that their competition show and it was exceptional can't wait to see that one again when we come with edna but let's go ahead and jump into this week in sports we'll start with football well lee it was pirate week yes it was yes, but this time is in vanderbilt as the cobras hosted the pirates of, uh, of the district the first pirates of the district rather uh, the game was just what the Cobras needed as they dominated in all aspects of the game. The Cobras would score on their second drive when Ashton Garza took it to the house on a 45-yard run. One short drive later, the old corn dog would appear, and the Cowboy Cooper Martin would trot into the end zone from 40 yards out. The Cobra defense stormed the backfield all night long. The defense recorded several tackles for a loss, including this tackle for a loss when the cannon, Cullen Dyson, blew through the pirate line tackling the ball carrier for one of many losses on the night. Garza would also connect with Cade Quebeca, or several receivers on the night, including the commander, Cade Quebeca. In the fourth quarter, the sophomore Zach Vadial came in the quarterback to clean up and scored his first varsity touchdown. We got to see that that night. The Cobras won on all sides of the ball. They played a clean game. The biggest improvement was the special teams. Bullseye, Bryce Warren. Oh, that's nailed. a new one. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> you like it. Bullseye. <laughs> Bryce Warren nailed a 40 yard field goal for his longest one of the year. And then the Cowboy Cooper Martin would end the night with well over 100 yards and three scores. Great game. Exactly what the Cobras needed. Yeah, no, it was a good, good week for the varsity to bounce back. It was also a great week for the JV as they remain undefeated. And uh, Cobras this week won this one. Get this, Will. 50 to 8. <laughs> they beat Mathis. Uh, the first quarter led off with Nick Salinas tackling the punter after a fumbled punt in Mathis' own end zone to score safety. A few plays later, the Cobra defense would forth a, force a Mathis fumble that Salinas would recover the ball and run it up before being uh, taken down. Caden Petrie would take the handoff the next play, score a touchdown, and uh, Pirates would answer back then with another uh, with a touchdown of their own. They tied the game with a two point conversion. But the second quarter started uh, the way this offense has gone all year with a Petru touchdown from 18 yards out. Bowen Motley picked up the ball after the Pirates bobbled uh, the kickoff, and he ran it into the end zone for a second score on back-to-back -back plays. Uh, by rule, the ball was placed at the Pirates' one-yard line. Uh, QB Cooper Francis scored the touchdown with a QB keeper. Uh, Cobra defensive players Colt Charbula and Garrett Kolodzizic were both in uh, on a sack and had multiple tackles for a loss. Uh, Gaziah Lopez also recorded an interception as the Cobras just flat out dominated the quarter. The Cobras would score another touchdown from a one-yard run uh, from Petru. Uh, they led 28-8 to at halftime. The third quarter started off with an 80-yard kickoff from Pe return from Petru. And the next pl play, Lane Puckett tackled the running back in the Pirates end zone. Cobras, Cobras got a safety out of that. Petru would add another touchdown later in the third, and David Gonzalez would add the final touchdown uh, from the Pirates 42 to seal the game. So basically, recap, score, 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 score. And, and I think you missed maybe uh, – no, actually, you didn't miss anybody on the team. I, no, I think you yeah. pretty much called everybody out. Yeah. So the JV have done an exceptional job. We get to 
to talk to their coach and, and hear from them a little bit later. Uh, the freshmen, they, uh, they traveled out to Kennedy last Thursday, and they played another physical game against a bigger opponent. Uh, during the opening kickoff, Landon Torres would recover the ball as Mason Hunt kick, uh, bounced off of one of the Lion players. Defense was a clear stand out of this game, though, Lee, because the Cobras defense forced a fumble in the first quarter where Elijah Taylor recovered the loose ball, returning it for 50 yards for the score. Uh, the Cobras would get great field position when Gael Garcia tackled a Lion punter to give the Cobras awesome field position within uh, scoring range. Then uh, Aiden Fitzgerald would punch it in uh, the score from six yards out. Then the Cobras would score the go-ahead winning touchdown on this 70-yard interception return from Elijah Taylor. The Cobra defense was a story of the game. They stepped it up, played extremely well. Mason Hunt had several tackles. Caden Nutley, Alan Baker, they uh, all had several tackles for a loss. Mason Hunt was perfect on the night with extra points. Cobras win it 21-14. Well, they say defense wins championships. In this case, defense actually scores the winning touchdown, actually wins the game. So not a metaphor, just getting it done. Eighth graders, uh, let's talk about them. The Rattlers were at home against the Mathis Bucks. Uh, the Bucks scored on their opening drive, and the Rattler defense stood strong in the second quarter uh, with a stop at the Rattler 11-yard line. And then on the next play, Wyatt Kurtz would take it to the house from 89 yards out. Kurtz uh, had great speed, split the D, break a tackle uh, to get into the end zone. The Bucks would then uh, score again in the second quarter, but on the ensuing kickoff, Mason Galbraith would trot to the house on a 72-yard kick return. Great display of blocking and field vision to find the end zone on special teams here. Rattler defense played tough all night, but ultimately uh, this, they fall in this one 22-14. That was a good game all the way around. Unfortunately, the score didn't show that, but the Rattlers played an exceptional game. Scoring on, on special teams, scoring on defense, it was, a, it was a really good game, good physical game. The seventh graders. Those, those Rattlers played back and forth game all night long that started on a 35-yard touchdown run by Gavin Stewart. Mathis would score on the next possession, and then on that ensuing kickoff, Aiden Ortiz, he would come in, and he would return the ball, and he could go all the way, and he <laughs> does on that return right there. Mathis would score again late in the fourth quarter with three minutes left. The Rattlers would drive down the field where Gavin Stewart would find the end zone again on a 30-yard scamper as time ran out. Ashton Mendoza would break the plane on the two-point conversion, but it wouldn't be enough as the Rattlers end up falling to the Bucks, 26-18. I like your call on that he could go all the way. I think that one's going to catch on, buddy. I think that's going to catch. <laughs> I want to keep saying that one. That's right. Hey, this week, uh, Friday, uh, Varsity will be traveling to Aransas Pass coverage of that game will be here on the Cobra Sports Network, so tune in. Uh, 7 o'clock pregame show, 7.30 kickoff. Uh, JV will be hosting uh, the Aransas Pass JV team with coverage of that game beginning also here on the Cobra Sports Network at 5.30. We do got a correction with that. Aransas Pass called and changed. They don't have oh, they don't have right. a JV team this week, so they're actually calling Sealy. Oh, so even better. We got the big dog coming to the house, so y'all tune in for that one starting at 5.30. Uh, Rattlers are going to travel to Aransas Pass with 7th grade starting at 5 o'clock, 8th grade right after that as they head down to the beach. That's it. Well, that's it for football this week. Let's see what happened in volleyball. <music> Varsity Volleyball was in action last Friday night against the Columbus Cardinals, who are undefeated in district play at 6-0 and sitting atop the district standings. Coming into that final night and that final round of that first round, that first round of play. The Cobras gave them a great fight, but ultimately fell in straight sets, 25-17, 25-19, and 25-12. With the loss, the Cobras finished the first round of district play at 5-2 and, and in sole possession of third place. Leading the way on offense was Erlen Bethany with five kills. Madison Quebeca would add four kills. Uh, Setter Pacey Rowe led the way with 10 assists, and Kate Simons had three aces from the service line. On Tuesday night, the Cobras hosted the Yoko Bulldogs, and it was an important game as these two teams are battling it out for second place right now. Unfortunately, this one did not go the Cobras way as they fell in three sets that night, 25-15, 25-19, and 25-23. But one big highlight, Cecilia Jalufka had a huge night as she led the team in kills, blocks, and aces. Yeah, so round run of district plays concluded last week, and this week on Tuesday night, 
everyone began round two. After that first game of round two, the Cobras district record sits at five and three, leaving them in third place. And also, as we take a look at the district standings, as we see that Columbus continues to stay on top as they remain unbeaten, Yoakum trailing at seven and one. But coming up this week, the Cobras will be traveling on Friday to Alt Air to take on the Rice Lady Raiders. And then next Tuesday, they will be back at home to host the Tide Haven Tigerettes at 6 o'clock. Wade Quebec will bring coverage for both those games. Yeah, it should be a good week for the volleyball to bounce back, pick up some much-needed district wins as they continue to hunt that last uh, that playoff spot and hold in third place. On the sub-varsity level, uh, JV was in action last Friday against Columbus uh, where they fell in two to the Cardinals. But last night, the JV bounced back strong against Yoakum. Uh, with the Cobras winning in straight sets, they take that one 25-21 and 25-22. Junior high, man, they were busy this last week. Yes, they were. The 7th and 8th grade A teams competed in the Quero tournament this past weekend, and they did a great job. The 7th grade team lost their first game in three sets, sending them to third place bracket. And from there, they dominated the next two teams, bringing home the third place trophy. The 8th grade A team went 3-0 and in tournament play, making it to the championship game against Quero. And it was exactly like what a championship game would, should look like. It was an exciting game with fantastic play from both teams. But at the end of the day, it was Industrial who prevailed as they won in straight sets and were named tournament champs. Yeah, and on Monday night, they got back in action. Uh, no rest for the weary as the rat, all the Rattler teams were uh, traveling to Altair Rice to continue on with district play. And as Coach Smith put it, they came back from that long bus ride with a clean sweep with all four teams earning the win in such dominating fashion that she thinks Rice is still digging out the splinters. <laughs> That's rough. That's rough. When you get the brooms out for a clean sweep like that, woo! <laughs> but uh, junior high volleyball teams will all be back in action next Monday at home as they host Palacios, and our coaches are going to be spending another Saturday this week as they take more teams to more tournaments. Uh, they'll be at Bay City for a volleyball tournament this weekend. So hats off to our coaches for their extra dedication. Well, that's it for volleyball. Let's run on over to cross country. This past weekend, cross country ran in the Crabs on the Bay cross country invitation on Port Lavaca. So they got to go hang out at the beach, Lee. That's, that's what it sounds like. That's a mouthful, the Crabs on the Bay. Uh, but the varsity girls did good, Will. They finished second overall with Kate Simons winning another race, followed by Elise Bullock with another top 10 finish. Carly Burrow came in at ninth, and Cora Motley also medaled. So another week for the girls dominating. Yeah, the varsity boys ended up playing in seventh. Uh, the JV girls came in second place with Madison Creamer, uh, Zerchi, Lindsey Ramirez, and Emery Freerbacher crossing the finish line in order, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's organization. That is very organized. Junior high girls and boys both placed fifth. They are off this Saturday. They get a weekend off for once, but they will be coming up Monday as they start cross country uh, running district in Yoakum for that district meet. So good luck to them up there. That's right. And I think one of the best things about that is they're going to all get to sleep late because these are all going to be evening events uh, for the cross country team. So go out and see them if you can. Cheer them on. It doesn't, it's not an early Saturday morning for once. <laughs> I bet they're enjoying that I part I bet of they it. will. Well, that wraps up the weekly sports update, but don't go anywhere because when we return, we will introduce the top performers in last week's varsity sporting events. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, Cobra fans. Each week, the Cobra Sports Network will award the Clark Constructors Top Performer Coin to a varsity athlete in each sport. Each week, these athletes are selected by their coaches for going above and beyond in competition and practice during the previous week. This week's selections are right here with me. First off, we've got Kay Quebeca, the commander. Uh, he had a solid game with three receptions, including one for a touchdown. Cade's consistent leadership and level-headedness has been invaluable for the Cobras this season, and he has been one of the most consistent players uh, for the Cobra football team. Yeah, that's right. That's on the offensive side. On defense this week, we had Sam Kurtz, who stepped up big last week, played a solid game from the strong safety position against Mathis. He had four solo tackles, one assist, and three tackles for a loss. He also contributed in the secondary with the pass breakup, and Sam has provided solid play on the edge this year. He's getting better week over week. Yeah, Sam wasn't able to be with us tonight, but we do have Autumn Callis. She has been working incredibly hard and does whatever is asked for her by her coaches staff. Uh, her con communication on and off the court has been a huge asset to the team, and she does a great job of helping us get ready for what other team is the other team is doing. She's been working hard all season on her passing form and her defense reading, and the coaching staff is very happy with the progress that she has made as a player and an amazing teammate. Finally, rounding out our top performers this week is Cora Motley uh, with cross country. She placed 11th overall this week, was a big reason the girls took home second place as a team overall. Uh, she's an extremely hard worker and coach says a true leader. Uh, she's also the only senior runner on the girls varsity team uh, this year, which naturally enhances that leadership position. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, y'all. Well, now, welcome. Congratulations, and thanks for being Thank here you. today. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Kay, the commander, man. How you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. <laughs> First of all, you know, we got to ask you, because we didn't ask your permission for that. We just <laughs> awarded that to you one day. And we did that because we see your leadership on the field. And we've seen that. I I've coached you for many years as well in, in the youth. Uh, program and and I've seen your leadership all the way starting from that that level. How has that worked out for you all the way through? Now this being your senior year and being voted uh, as a leader as well. On the uh, I think that helps me as a player more than anything, getting respect from my teammates, and uh, it helps us accomplish our goals and keeps us focused. So when I when I instruct our team and trying to keep everybody going towards our common goal, uh, I think that leadership helps me keep everybody focused and keep us striving towards our goals. Yeah, absolutely. And some of those goals are, you know, winning football games out here and extending, going further than anybody else has, has gone before you guys uh, this year. That's what you and I had talked about at the beginning of the season yes, in sir. one of our very first interviews mm -hmm. uh, back. That was pre corn dog era. Pre -corn yeah, that, that it was. <laughs> <laughs> that it was. AC and AC. Yeah. 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 <laughs> absolutely. Speaking of corn dog, I'm loving the t shirt, man. So you guys yes, have sir. really taken that, uh, you know, that, that whole corn dog part and just it. Be it's become something now with the mm -hmm. team. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I mean, shoot, you look out there and you got 6'4 outside with Landon Wolfskill. You got 6'3 with me. You got Ashton Garza, who's a crazy runner, runner who's playing quarterback for some reason. You got C Cowboy <laughs> Cooper Martin. Like, how, how are you going to control all those guys along with Major LaRue as a key blocker and Nick Kutzler out there? There's no, there's no way to defend that. So uh, A lot of weapons. <laughs> a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been exciting to see that, uh, how the coaching staff has implemented that part of it. And it's just been even more fun watching you guys just, <laughs> just, just conform to it and just run and have fun with it because it's, it's been a lot of fun. So yes, sir. Good luck to you Friday against the Rams' pass. And, man, I can't wait for next week. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> big one. Big yes, one. Yes. Well, Autumn, y'all had a big one against Edna already. You took care yes, of that. Y'all made a great run through the first set of uh, district play. Uh and are well positioned to make a good finish through the second and be well set up for the playoffs. Tell yes, me sir. tell me what you thought as y'all went through those first, uh, I guess, series with the everybody. Yes, sir. Well, I think that we just kept with what Coach Dunn was wanting us to do. Um, we kept up the skill work. We come into practice with a positive attitude every day, ready to talk to each other, figure out what we need to to make it happen. And I think that we've just been progressing throughout district, and we're looking for a bright future and into the playoffs. Is there an advantage to getting to see these teams twice? Do you have a do you have a preview of them, so to speak, after the first round? Uh, I th I think we do have a little bit of a preview. They do adjust um, since they have played us and they have a little bit of knowledge of us. Um, 
but I think that we're able to just change it up and surprise them with something new, and we're ready to come out and win. Well, talking about adjusting and changing up, Coach said one of the highlights is your defensive reading. What, what does that mean to somebody who, who <laughs> doesn't know much about volleyball? <laughs> so uh, defensive reading is basically right whenever the set is uh, set out to a hitter, looking at the hitter, seeing where their hips are facing, where their approach is coming from, the angle of their arm swing. Some players are more advanced and they're able to make cuts. So you have to be ready and you have to move as soon as they make that hit. So what you're telling us, volleyball is secure. The hits don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> In some ways. <laughs> what's on the playlist? What's uh, pregame? What's on the playlist oh, for y'all? Oh gosh, I'm not the person to ask about this. <laughs> There's a little bit of everything. We have some Swifties, of course. We have the usual pump up. I don't even know what it's called, <laughs> but the fast stuff. <laughs> it's all. It's a mix of everything, honestly. <laughs> Well, I think you've got a pretty good Swifty to your left. Today. I yeah. sure do. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Uh, y'all had y'all did really well this weekend yes. in cross country, but y'all, I mean, that's like a broken record. Y'all been doing that <laughs> week in a week out. Yeah, we we are quite competitive, and we are excited for every meet, and we want to prove ourselves each and every meet. So it's always fun going into it, being confident and ready to. Have y'all come on the <laughs> network and tell everybody about what we did. Well, so. One thing we've talked about repeatedly is the sand. We've been looking forward to beach week. You know? <laughs> yeah. We, we want to know, what was it like? Did it did it change preparations? Did it change performances? Uh, we, we didn't know what we were going into, really, because for some reason, Calhoun didn't even set out a starting line for us until we were <laughs> there and doing it. And they were like, okay, we want you exactly on the beach, right next to the water, and in, like, the thickest part of the sand and that was at the beginning of the race probably for like the first 800 was just like getting through yeah. that sand and then it was probably smooth sailing on the road for the rest of it but yeah the sand was definitely a challenge that we don't see very often <laughs> when we do these meets so well we've talked a lot about it looking forward to it so yeah. i'm glad to hear what it was really like yeah so, but we were all very curious yeah. <laughs> but it certainly didn't change the outcome. I mean, mm -hmm. pretty much y'all's team performs week in and week out. Y'all continue just to have success. Big meets, small meets, big schools, little schools, it really doesn't matter. Y'all are y'all are really doing well this year. Yeah, I enjoyed the smaller meets because it's almost, it feels more competitive. I don't know how to explain, but like passing girls like gives you so much stamina and so much energy. And at the smaller meets, you can really see like where you are in the race compared to like bigger meets like Sealy. So I enjoyed the smaller meet this week. Well, good job to each of y'all. It's, it's a huge honor to be rewarded with one of these coins. Yes, Coaches sir. definitely know who's putting out and working. And so congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. And good luck to you. Monday, you start district, they're going to be running in Yoakum. So we're looking forward to hearing all about that race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for being here again, folks. And uh, we're going to take a quick break but when we return we're going to be joined by JV football coach Caleb Carney apparently they're winning a whole bunch of games down there in the JV side so that's we what I hear okay. <laughs> we'll be right back don't go anywhere Cobra fans, with us today is not, is not what I found out. Your name isn't Caleb; it's Cody. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, uh, now we we got to fix that. That was a problem on the on our. <laughs> but coach, thanks for joining us. This is your first year here at Industrial, and uh, you know, you're the JV uh, offensive uh, head coach, uh, and the JV boys, from what we've been watching and hearing, they have just been doing. They've been on a tear. They've been doing a good job. Those guys get after it and work hard and. I feel like, you know, our goal every day is to get a little better. I tell them one or two things happens every day. You either get a little better or you get a little worse. And, you know, you never stay the same. So our goal is to get a little better every day. And I feel like they've done a good job of doing that from, from day one in the scrimmage. Yeah, some of the numbers we've seen, especially on the offensive side, have been phenomenal. I mean, y'all have been just rolling through opponent after opponent, it seems like. Yeah, they've, they've been doing a good job. And uh, Petru, you know, he runs the ball really well. And, uh, he you knows a credit to him and his hard work because he came up to me and told me, you know, coach, I was not this good of a football player. 
last year. He said, I worked, worked really hard to get here. And I said, well, don't forget what got you here. You know, don't, don't uh, stay humble and continue to work to continue to get better. Um, but, yeah, he's done a great job. Uh, Cooper's done a great job stepping up as a freshman and uh, leading the team. And uh, they got a really good offensive line in front of them that uh, takes care of business. Yeah, they've been doing it. You had a couple freshmen on the offensive line. Too. I know Brian Bethany went up there as well, and he's always fun to watch. Uh, defensive side of things, they've been really wreaking havoc. We've seen some big play out of Colt Charbula, Garrett Char Kalajizic, Nick Salim. I'm naming probably half the team right there. But uh, uh, you got Coach Van Duren is, is helping you all on the defensive side, right? Yes, sir. Coach Van Duren calls the defense, and he does a phenomenal job as well. Uh, and, you know, part of coaching is getting the kids to play hard for you, and them guys get after it for him. So he's doing a really good job with them. That's fantastic. And it's his first year here, too. It's, so, so tell us a little bit, where, where did you come from? Um, well, I spent my first 11 years in Hitchcock. Um, kind of, you know, I was fortunate. I, I mean, I started out at, uh, with the freshman. I never had, went down to the junior high. Um, but I worked my way up from there and uh, became offensive coordinator probably the second year, the third year that I was coaching uh, at Hitchcock. So I was the offensive coordinator for them for about eight years. And I uh, was fortunate to coach some really good athletes. Um, and then I, we went over to Giddings uh, for a year. Um, kind of wanted to get my feet wet in some other places. My dad was the head coach there at uh, Hitchcock. And so the staff that was underneath him during his coaching time was the one that was his predecessor when he left. So I, I kind of only knew one way of doing things. Um, so that's part of the reason why I wanted to go somewhere else and just kind of see the way that other people do things and just build myself a better foundation for coaching. Okay. Well, that's impressive. You know, a lot of people are scared of change. But really, those guys who embrace it and adapt are the ones that succeed the, the best in life. So credit to you for going around and, you know, kind of taking a tour and seeing how things are done elsewhere. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, it was, it was tough to leave the kids. You know, you get attached to kids. And so it was, there was some tears whenever I left there, you know. But I figured it was the best thing for, you know, me and my family to, to move on and try to find some different ways of doing things. Well, we're very glad to have you here. I know this year there's been a couple new faces. You know, how has the coaching staff, you know, really – support each other and kind of gelled together. Oh, that's amazing. It's a, a, it's a family, you know, which is what it has to be to be successful. Um, you know, you got to have a, you got to have a tight circle and you got to support each other because, you know, everybody knows it's easiest to call the play after it's already happened. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of critique that always comes in any community that you're in and you have to, you know, tread lightly and make sure that you support everybody. No, absolutely. And that, and that part of it makes it tough, but you guys are doing a fantastic job of, of bringing the kids up as well. And it, it's one thing with a small school too is having several different teams. You got a freshman, JV, and you know, varsity, and just trying to find those games. And we kind of ran into that situation this week as well. So y'all end up having to combine the freshman and JV team and didn't even have a game from what we've been told from Aransas Pass. Right. Uh, but y'all ended up going out and finding a really good team in, in Sealy, from what I've heard. Yes, yeah, so we kind of just threw it out there to see if we get any bites, and Sealy jumped on it. and. You know, so right now, it's, you know, it's a good problem that we have. It's, we have a lot of kids, and we have three teams in a, at the 3A level, and not a lot of people have that. Um, so it's a good problem. Uh, but the problem you face is with other teams not having three teams, you, you know, consequently you have to go out and find some games that are not within the district and, you know, figure out, try to piece things together as you go. Well, I'm excited about that Sealy game because I've been here, and they've been – they're a pretty good football team. They are. Yeah. We, uh, we were fortunate to get a little bit of film on them. And uh, have got to look at them, and, and they got some dudes. Uh, they're pretty quick, running backs really, really fast. Quarterbacks big. Right side of their offensive line is uh, extremely large for a JV team. Um, I, however, you know, I feel like there's some things defensively that we can take advantage of. Um, so we look forward to trying to get some numbers in some different places with some formations, and uh, making something happen. Well, cool. I'm excited to see that one, and you'll be able to see that tomorrow. It is going to be live here. Cobra Sports Network is going to bring that to you. Coverage is starting at 5.30 here at the Snake Pit. If you're around or you're local, come out, see this. Check this JV team out. They've been doing exceptional. Come out, uh, cheer the boys on, and Coach Carney. Uh, Coach, appreciate you for being here. Thanks appreciate a lot. It. Appreciate you having us. Good luck tomorrow. Good luck Friday. And, man, get ready for next week. Yes, <laughs> sir. We'll do it. All right, folks, well, we're going to take a break, but we're going to bring, uh, when we come back, we've got the Snake Pit games, and we got some of these JV players that we were talking about that are going to be joining us. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, Cobra fans, to this week's edition of the Snake Pit Games. With us today are the JV boys who are going to be competing in the two-minute drill. First up, the defensive guys. We've got Colt Charbula, Garrett Kalajizic. Then, on the offensive side, we've got Caden Petru and Cooper Francis. So, boys, Lee's going to ask you guys some questions, and this is all pop culture and questions about your school, about the Industrial Cobras, okay? Oh. So we'll see how much you guys yeah. know. I hope y'all studied up. Y'all didn't realize y'all were having a quiz today, did you? No. no. Pop, pop quiz. Pop quiz. It's on it. Yes. today. And it's, <laughs> and it's live in front of a camera, too, oh. for all your friends to see. So. Oh. <laughs> and it's time as well. Okay. So you guys ready? Defense is going first. All right, guys. You got, uh, as mi one minute to answer as many questions as you can. Clock's yeah. going to start as soon as I finish the first question. Here we go. Before they were maroon and gray, what were the school colors for the Industrial Rattlers? Gold and green. On the television show The Office, what company does Michael Scott work for? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Coach, I don't watch that. <laughs> uh, what colors do you mix to make the color green? Blue and yellow. What location is used for all state competition send-offs? Uh, Cover Hill. What does SMH mean? Y'all don't know. <laughs> you can pass if you need to. Pass. <laughs> How many meters in a kilometer? Oh, no. One. One thousand. <laughs> what is the name of the school yearbook? The school yearbook. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Travis Kelsey rumored to be dating? Taylor Swift. <laughs> What's the highest mountain in the world? Mount Everest. What U.S. Army general is in the school's fight song oh, named after? Uh, the Army? <laughs> <laughs> what U.S. Army right. general? <laughs> All right. Here we, here we go. There's a thousand <laughs> meters in the kilometer. Uh, Take my head. <laughs> That's them. You got five questions S correct. Eight. Maroon and gray before they were there. The Rattlers were green and gold. The location used for all state competition send-offs, Cobra Hill. Uh, the name of the school yearbook, you didn't the Derrick. And the U.S. Army General, the school fight song is named after Patton. Oh. Uh -oh. On the television show The Office, the company Michael Scott works for is Dunder Mifflin. Who SMH means shaking my head, which I think a little bit of that was going on by everybody in this room. <laughs> <laughs> I never know what that was. Indeed. You do know you're Swift. You bunch of Swifties <laughs> yeah, got that one correct. We got correct. Some Travis Kelsey's yeah. new girlfriend. Uh, you also got correct. Colors green and gold is blue and yellow. And uh, how many meters in a kilometer? A thousand. Oh. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> highest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. Nice job, D. So how many uh, was that? Five. five. We got five. Like six. Yeah, yeah. We got six. All right, offense, you ready? All right. Here we go. Name the two industrial mascots. Uh, Striker and Venom. How many books in the Harry Potter series? Eight. <laughs> what is the tallest animal in the world? Um, giraffe. <laughs> what is the nickname of Cobra Field? Snake Pit. Name one of the Sanders systems from the movie Hocus Pocus. Who watches that movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What pop star is the godmother of Elton John's sons? <laughs> Who the heck is that? <laughs> Something hey, John. Hey, what like vegetables you use to make a pickle? Uh, cucumber. cucumber. Besides yeah. volleyball, in what other sport has Industrial won a state championship? Golf. <laughs> what name is Robin Fenty better known by? Who? Robin Fenty. <laughs> Robin Fenty? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what happens at 212 degrees Fahrenheit? Water boil. The victory bell at Cobra Field is rang every time the Cobras score in memory of who? Tie. Mm. Hey, that's a tie. No. That's six. It's gotta be. Three, Unless it's seven. Four, Five, six, seven. No! Yeah! Yeah! Seven. <laughs> it's it's hey, hold on. They got easy questions. All right, here we go. <laughs> the two industrial right. mascots, you are correct, Venom and Striker. Yeah. The nickname for Cobra Field, the Snake Pit. Who doesn't know that? Uh, besides <laughs> volleyball, Industrial has won uh, state championships in golf, cross country, and track. Oh. Uh, how yeah. many books yeah. in the Harry Potter series? We thought it was seven. I understand it's eight. So we hey, will else? give you that, that one. That was a guess. That's coming from our uh, resident oh, Harry Potter expert, Cade Cabal. That was a guess. Uh, tallest animal in the world, giraffe. Vegetable used for pickles is a cucumber, and water does boil at 212 degrees. 
Yeah. Offense puts seven on the board. Yeah. Like always. Yeah, but we keep them from putting points on the board. Yeah, we got that. <laughs> so that's it for the snake pick games today, folks. Offense, good job. Good guys, both of y'all groups. Good luck to y'all tomorrow as y'all are taking on a great team when we hear Sealy mm -hmm. uh, here at the Snake Pit. We're going to have that live for you, so don't miss that. Sure, Coverage right. starts at 5.30 tomorrow. Well, just like that, this, play, this show is wrapped up just like a snake coiling around its prey. But, folks, remember, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Every subscriber counts. As always, guys, it's, it's a great, great day, day to be a Cobra. Thanks for watching.